So my first FPV build of 2023 is going to be based around the AOS 3.5 frame from Chris Rosser. Um, it's already um, ready for the DJI Air Unit 03, which is the star of the show here. I wanted to you know, keep everything below 250 grams because I don't want to have to mess with remote ID. So everything's going to be as light as possible. The motors I'm going to be using are the Zing V2 1404 3800 KV motors. They look pretty nice. Um, as far as the buzzer, I'm going to be using the ViFly uh, Finder Mini. It's the smaller version, which keeps the weight down. I'm going to use an all-in-one board, which is the Beast, iFlight Beast F7, 45 amp. It's probably overkill, but um, it's an all-in-one board. I've used them in the past, and it's worked out great for smaller builds. And of course the frame here. Um, and then I'm also going to uh, use uh, these uh, race LEDs so I can easily change out the motors and it makes it look nice. I'm gonna use some UmaGrip. And I'm actually gonna set this thing up so I can run it in two different modes. I'm gonna be running Express LRS and I'm trying to, again, keep it lightweight. I don't fly out that far, so I'm just going to be using the um, nano version of this, which is the, the very small one with just a little ceramic antenna. I get plenty of range. Uh, it goes further than what I need to fly. Um, again, I don't, I'm not a long-range pilot, so this gives me adequate range. Uh, but then also, it has this Beast uh, F7 AOI. Uh, board has all the UARTs I need to basically run it in two modes. I'm going to run it, uh, so I'm going to set it up so that I can either run it um, with the um, DJI FPV controller um, so I can control the camera on and off recording, and then if I want to use Express LRS, I can just go into Betaflight and change the configuration relatively easy. And then this also, um, if you load Express LRS um, 3.0 with Betaflight, um, the newest version of Betaflight that's in release candidate, the 4.4 version, um, you're able to actually configure things across Wi-Fi, so which is pretty slick. I started assembling the frame. I just wanted everyone to see how the uh, arms are sandwiched in between this uh, center plate on the bottom and then two smaller plates on each end and uh, the standoffs are 20 millimeter and the screws that hold it in place are 12 millimeter so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Loctite always use Loctite sparingly um, and then plus uh, just keep in mind that it does eat plastic so if you get it on a prop or something it'll make the prop crack and become brittle. So um, be careful with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the other side. Arms installed with Loctite and standoffs in place. Have the race lead installed. I use this E6000 glue to hold it on. So next I'm gonna mount the motors. Just as an aside, this is a VTX antenna mount uh, from Chris Rosser. I'll go ahead and link the SDL file URL so that you can download it. But I'm going to be using this. It should work fine with the DJI Air Unit 3. Motor wire solder to race LEDs. Soldered on pigtail with XT30 connector. Low ESR capacitor soldered on. As well as the motor wires that are going to be attaching to the LED race wire. On the Express LRS receiver. You have ground, five volts. The white wire is on TX, and the yellow wire is on RX. And then on the flight controller, I have the ground pad hooked up, as well as the uh, five volt line here. It's coming off of Beck. And then of course, this is UART3. Kind of see the markings on there. Um, which is the receive end, which goes to the TX side 
on the receiver, and then the yellow wire is on TX3, which goes, of course goes to the RX pad, or the yellow wire. The Vifly buzzer, you have the pad here is buzz minus, and the red wire is buzz plus, and then the black wire goes over to ground. Mounted the flight controller and used these self-locking nuts. Okay, the moment of truth. I'm using this Vifly Short Saver 2 to make sure everything's connected correctly. Uh, the buzzer's buzzing. Got lead flashing on the receiver. I completed soldering up the motor wires to the lead race wire in the middle here and routed all the motor wires neatly. I went ahead and used some motor wire tape to hold these down away from the props. So next I'm going to go ahead and install the DJI Air Unit 3. My next challenge is getting the DJI Air Unit 03 um, wired in. Uh, the wire harness that came with it um, has a six pin connector and the wire harness that comes with my flight controller is a seven pin and plus the the wiring pin out is totally different so what i did i removed the connector on one end i do have a seven pin connector um, that i got from a kit and i'm just going to um, do the conversion and create a new cable harness so that i can uh, plug in my air unit forgot to mention the way that you um, remove the wires from the connector is you just use an exacto blade and go ahead and just lift up the tabs gently uh, when you're removing the wires from a connector so quickly going through the wiring of this cable harness red is uh, VCC VBAT then ground then RX which goes to TX on the other end, and then TX to RX on the other end of the flight controller, and then ground again, and then yellow is S-Bus. I decided to go with the Newbie Drone DJI 03 Air Unit 20x20 adapter mount, uh, link below. Um, it does come with mounting screws. It is hard to source these screws, uh, but I just went ahead because these our countersunk, the uh, adapter plate itself, the thread length on the existing screws was plenty long. So I just went ahead and reused those. Um, also, uh, what I like about it, it's aluminum, so it's gonna conduct heat away. It doesn't weigh much. Um, also, it gives you this air gap, which I think is better than just letting it sit on the uh, bottom plate here. Um, the, this particular frame is milled to our hole drilled that is the right pattern to accept the DJI Air unit. But as you can see, this very bottom plate here um, is kind of in, well, it is in the way of uh, putting these screws in. So you almost have to pull that plate off that I'm pointing to right here first. Um, so I just felt like um, using the adapter and getting the better cooling with airflow underneath it was a better better way to do it so that's what i did i'm extremely happy with how this mount worked out you can see the four screws that's holding it in place got the back tpu antenna holder mounted and then you can see this this nice air gap underneath the air unit which should provide plenty of airflow to keep this thing cool Double-sided sticky taped and tie wrapped down the Express LRS nano receiver. I put the top plate on one to show you where I placed some of the components. Uh, right here is where the buzzer is placed with double-sided sticky tape. Um, you can see the again the Express LRS receiver tucked on in there. Um, I did um, mount the camera and. Then I also just did a zip tie 
around the cable harnesses just to kind of hold things in towards the center. Um, and next I'm going to go ahead and put the top plate on. I will zip tie this uh, pigtail to make sure if I have a battery ejection, it doesn't yank the uh, pigtail off the flight controller. Here's what the finished product looks like. I did put some Uma grip on the top. It's the thin stuff versus the very thick black. Um, this is lighter weight and provides plenty of traction for your battery so it doesn't slip. Um, I did add a battery strap. So yeah, it came together quite nicely. I did put some uh, skid pads on the bottom. Um, they're lightweight. They're just ones I got off of Amazon that I cut down. And uh, I don't skid along the ground uh, to doing freestyle tricks. That's just not something I, I do. So these foam pads work fine. And they're lightweight, so hardly add any weight at all. So next, let's go ahead and get a weight. For a weight, I'm measuring 177 grams with everything except a battery, including the props. I had been flying this build with a 650 milliamp hour 4S Tattoo battery, uh, but I did happen to find on Amazon, I'll link it below, these GNB 850 milliamp hour batteries. I got a couple of them. And uh, they also allow it to be under 250 grams. So I'll go ahead and uh, try these out and see how much more flight time I get, but that's pretty promising. Here are my thoughts on my first build of 2023. Starting with the um, two stars of the show, we'll talk about the pros, starting with the frame. Um, I really think the um, AOS 3.5 is a very innovative frame. I like the sandwich design. I think the frame itself and the arms are uh, designed to be very rigid and I wasn't getting any arm flex. I think it's easy to replace arms. Uh, the build itself is fairly simple. I like that uh, um, Chris Rosser gave you enough room to put in a stack. Um, if you wanted to go with something other than an all-in-one flight controller like I have, there's plenty uh, enough room to put in a 20 by 20 stack in here. Uh, I, I like that um, the, the frame is extremely quiet as the black box log showed. And um, there are, um, like if you go into Thingiverse, there's, uh, uh, you can print out some accessories for this, like this TPU antenna holder, and they even have arm guards. I didn't print those out because they just add weight. But uh, overall, I give two thumbs up on the frame itself. The only niggle with the frame, I wasn't able to fit the ND filter I have for my Avada. Maybe there'll be an ND filter that will come out that will fit, but the ones I have will not. Um, moving on to the DJI Air Unit 3, it is a next level of clarity in your goggles. I, you know, it is just very immersive to fly this thing um, in the short time I had um, flying it. So, uh, definitely give it, uh, you know, for quality and immersive feel, definite high marks. I love it that it has an onboard DVR, as you can see, with an SD card slot. And then also it has, you know, a built-in um, storage, so you don't even have to have an SD card. Uh, so, that is a big plus for me because I don't like adding... Um, external cameras is just something else for me to worry about and the video quality of the DVR is plenty good as you saw I was flying without stabilization on and the video quality is plenty good for what I use it for which is posting on YouTube so definitely give the air unit uh, two, two, two thumbs up as far as the Zing motors uh, the 1404s uh, there I like these motors they're very smooth and um, efficient. Uh, as far as the electronics, of course, the Happy Mo the uh, Happy Mall Express LRS um, module I have, I was getting fine range. Um, if I want to, I can go ahead and the way I have things set up, um, I can just change things in the Betaflight configurator 
and if I wanted to switch over to the DJI um, RC transmitter I can um, but uh, even though it's just a little ceramic antenna on it I was getting plenty of good enough range for way, the way I fly um, the only niggle I have or downfall to this build is um, iFlight no longer sells this be beast um, iFlight uh, F7 45 amp uh, all-in-one flight controller but there are substitutes for it that will keep it down to the same weight um, an example of that is this Gep RC. I'm looking at uh, Get FPV site here. Um, it's the F7 22 all in one. I haven't used this before. It is an F7, and 35 amps is going to be plenty. And it's capable of 2S to 6S um, as far as uh, input voltages. So that is one that you could use as a substitute. Another pro of this build are the flight times. I was getting over five minutes. Uh, flight time cruising with a little bit of light acro thrown in uh, but that's with these 850 milliamp hour batteries not even charged to high voltage so I would imagine you'd get closer to six minutes if you were to charge it up to uh, high voltage but it uh, did quite well even though the weather was uh, cold colder um, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit Overall, I'm very pleased with this build, um, with the caveat that I haven't had a lot of time between snowstorms to be able to fly this, and uh, definitely going to be putting on the more aggressive tune, and um, as always, um, I greatly appreciate you uh, tuning into this channel, and uh, post any comments below or questions that you might have. Apologies I didn't get more flight time, but this is what the weather's like here a day after my first maiden flight so you can see this isn't flying weather <laughs>